Hey, pump the brakes for just a minute. I want to explain how nitric oxide works in the body when it comes down to blood flow, when it comes down to brain activity, and when it comes down to overall muscle performance and cellular performance. Okay, you don't have to just go load up on a nitrous oxide product. Okay, it's not always necessary. Now, they have a place, but I want to explain how veggies and how food actually affects nitric oxide and how you can get the biggest benefit. But first, I have to explain what nitric oxide really is, because so many people that I talk to just think that it's an NO2 capsule that you take. That's not the case, not at all. Here's how it works. Inside your arteries, you have something called the endothelial layer, okay? And you have endothelial cells that are in the artery that produce nitric oxide. Yes, the cells in your arteries already naturally produce nitric oxide. It's the job of that nitric oxide to do a couple things. But for the sake of this video, it's mainly able to penetrate through the smooth muscle tissue and thereby allow the vasodilation, which is the opening of the arteries and more blood flow, so you can get more nutrients and more oxygen to the cell to better your performance and better how you feel. Now there's something important that we have to know though. Nitric oxide production is ultimately created by the immune system. See, it's made up of macrophages, which are a specific type of white blood cell. A lot of people don't realize this, that the NO2 system in our body is actually part of our immune system. It plays a role in killing off bacteria and killing off viruses and keeping the endothelial layer of the arteries healthy. A lot of us always forget that the arteries are living and they have cells in there and that controls how big, how small the arteries get and that controls our oxygen delivery and our overall nutrient delivery. Now let's explain how this pertains to performance for a second. I want you to imagine training at high altitude, going and working out at super high altitude. We all know that that's difficult, right? It's really tough because you're not getting much oxygen. Now think about training at sea level. It's a lot easier because you're getting plenty of oxygen. Well, the same thing happens inside your body when you have enough NO2 or not enough NO2. Since nitric oxide increases blood flow, it increases oxygen delivery but it actually increases oxygen uptake within the cell too. And this is where I get totally jazzed on the science. See, it has to do with something known as a cytochrome, okay? A cytochrome C oxidase to be specific. The cytochrome blocks what's known as the respiratory chain. The respiratory chain is really a fancy way of describing what happens when your body actually uptakes oxygen and delivers it to a cell and utilizes it. Well, here's the thing. That cytochrome C oxidase stands in front of the cell and it blocks a percentage of the oxygen from being delivered, also thereby blocking the delivery of some nutrients. So where does nitric oxide come in? Well, nitric oxide comes in and it's powerful and it pushes it out of the way. It pushes that cytochrome that's blocking the cell out of the way, therefore making it so that the respiratory chain can be completed. Okay, you can then get more oxygen to the cell, which means more nutrients to the cell. This means a better muscle pump, and it means better recovery after your workout, and it means better blood flow to the brain so you feel better as well. So that being said, let's talk about some science, let's talk about a little bit of research that proves that nitric oxide plays a huge role in our efficiency with workouts, in our efficiency in everyday life, even with how we think. So this study was published by the University of Exeter, okay? They conducted this study, and what they looked at was those that consumed beet juice, which is high in something called nitrate, which converts to nitric oxide, and I'll explain that momentarily. Okay, what they looked at were eight test subjects. These eight test subjects consumed 500 milliliters of beet juice for six days prior to a very intense indoor cycling workout. Then, they measured these same subjects with a placebo. Okay, the placebo was black currant extract, so they didn't know the difference between the beet and the black currant. Well, here's what they found out, and this is crazy. Okay, those that consume the beet juice, or when they consume the beet juice rather, they found that there was a 49% increase in nitrate levels, which is the precursor to nitric oxide, but a 19% increase in oxygen uptake to the cell, okay, meaning the workout ultimately got 19% easier. Then they also found that they lasted 16% longer in their workouts, probably because the cells weren't getting tired and they were able to get more oxygen. That is pretty darn crazy. Okay, now we have to remember how the nitrate converts into nitric oxide. So I'm gonna explain that. When you have nitrates coming from veggies, coming from beets, anything like that, they hit your tongue and they turn into nitrites, okay? So the saliva combines with the nitrate to create nitrite. 
Then you swallow the nitrite containing saliva and that reacts in your stomach and the acids there to create nitric oxide. Thereby, we are now increasing nutrient delivery and oxygen through that conversion process. Pretty darn crazy. That being said, let's get to what you can do to start making yourself feel better and to get more brain boosting, muscle building, blood flow delivering power. Let's talk about beets and citrus for a second. Beets, I don't need to spend a lot of time on. You heard my case study, okay? Pretty straightforward. Creates more nitric oxide. But what about vitamin C and citrus? Well, here's the thing. Vitamin C protects the immune system. And if you were paying attention earlier in the video, you know that I said that the actual nitric oxide production is really a product of the immune system. So vitamin C protects that process. It protects the macrophages, therefore letting them do their job that much better. Okay, this next tip is gonna be one that you all probably hate me for. I'm gonna advise that you do your cardio and don't skip it, even if you're trying to build muscle. Let me say that again. Don't skip your cardio even if you're trying to build muscle. It doesn't matter. It has to do with blood flow. You see, the actual benefit that you get from more blood flow, more oxygen, more nutrient delivery that is created by doing more cardio far outweighs the aspect of burning some calories by doing cardio. Don't overthink it. Cardio is good for blood delivery and there are studies to back that up. I'm not gonna go into detail in the study, but essentially it showed that those that do just 10 or 15 minutes of gentle cardio end up keeping their blood flow levels elevated well into their 70s and 80s, whereas those that are sedentary have a 25 to 30% drop in their overall blood flow. That's powerful, 25% less oxygen, 25% less protein, 25% less healthy fats, that's 25% less ability to get in shape. So I know that that's serious, I know you have to make an adjustment, but don't skip it. So make sure that you keep it locked in here on the Thomas DeLauer channel. Comment, let me know what you wanna see. I do my best to reply to those comments, I do my best to get back to everybody, but sometimes it's difficult, but I do read those and I do get really good ideas from you guys when it comes to videos. So fire away and I'll see you in the next video.